Hey everybody, it's Mike AK, that resale guy coming to you on a Monday morning. Got a weekend full of sales off of eBay. I even sold an item on Amazon. I'll show you a couple things that I picked up recently, so let's get going. This weekend wasn't too bad for sales. It wasn't the greatest weekend. You know, we're, we're in December, we're in that Q4, but we're in the last month, the home stretch heading into Christmas. And I was hoping that this would be one of those big weekends of sales that come in. It just, it just didn't quite get there. Again, Friday and Saturday were decent, and then Sunday, just not really a whole lot. I don't know why eBay doesn't like me on Sunday. There's something about it. Uh, I had sold, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, we had like five or six sales, so I guess it, I guess it all kind of even out for the weekend. Total of 20 sales, 600 and some odd dollars. I had one come in this morning, so it's throwing off my total a bit, but I will show you what sold this morning because it was kind of a cool item. Uh, I already pulled all the items that uh, I have to ship today. Shipping is going to be relatively easy because a lot of these were, were pretty small items or just easily boxable items. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I did sell a few sports cards this weekend, so I'll go ahead and show you those. Uh, I had one person buy a couple different lots, and it's kind of uh, different. I'm going to have to show some of these. So anyway, uh, we'll go from cheapest to, to most expensive in these cards. First up, we got Gary Templeton. Autograph card 1983 Fleer Baseball. This is an in-person autograph one that you would have got out at a baseball game or something. This was from back in the day when I used to go out and get autographs. Back in the, the mid to late 80s, I used to go to the spring training complexes a lot when I was a teenager. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, and get autographs. It was so fun back then. It was so fun. I have such great memories of getting autographs. So guys, some great stories from Tony Gwynn and Rod Crew getting their autographs. These Hall of Fame legendary type guys. Uh, but anyway... Gary Templeton, this sold for $7.99 plus shipping, going out eBay standard envelope. Uh, next up, we got Jordan Love. This is a Prism rookie card, but this is like the black and white version, a uh, little parallel of that one. This card did have a couple little issues. I know you're not going to be able to see it, but there's a couple little like print lines on the back. Takes on the value quite a bit, because if someone wanted to get this graded, those print lines are going to take it down quite a bit. Jordan Love just had a big win last night against... The Chiefs, uh, he's been playing pretty well lately, so I can see why his cards are starting to sell a little bit more than they had been. I think this sold for uh, $12.99. $12 and honestly, I probably paid around $10 for this card, so I'm probably just breaking even. I didn't realize it had these print lines on the back when I bought it that day. It was part of a big bulk lot that I paid like a hundred and some dollars for. So I'm just guessing I paid $10. I could have paid a little less, but you know, it was in that bulk lot. So it's kind of hard to calculate exactly what I paid for that individual card. Next up, we have an autograph card. I think it's the only, no, it's not the only autograph I sold. Uh, this is Barry Larkin. Barry Larkin, uh, but this is from National Treasures, I believe, and they did them all in college uniforms because they didn't have the license to put them in their pro uniforms. So they do a lot of these college ones. I don't really like it. There's way too many cards coming out, way too many college and uh, non-uniform pictures and stuff, but companies still just want to make money, so they're still shoveling these cards out there. Uh, this one sold, I think I had it in my store for 40 and I sent a discount of 10%. So it sold for like 36 99 Uh, I think the pop-up will show the 40, but yeah, I sold that at 10% off. Uh, still a pretty good little sale on that one. All right. Next sale. I had one person send me a lot of emails over the weekend. I don't know what quite to make of it. I don't know if any of you have ever had this issue come up where people uh, send you messages. Hey, hey, we're a charity. We're buying cards for people or kids that are either sick or in the hospital. They sent me photos of like their 501c paperwork and some pictures of people that were ill. I don't know if it's legit or not. Realistically, it didn't really matter in my decision to sell these cards because they've been in my store for a while. These were part of a big group lot I bought off of whatnot off of John, the Cincinnati picker. It's been well over six months ago. I think it was earlier this year, and I've been slowly selling off that collection. And some of these just haven't sold, so they wanted them, and I was willing to make a deal. Because I think I had uh, this card of Joe Panic. It's an autographed card. I think it's serial numbered on the back somewhere. I think out of 99. It's like a purple version. And I think I had this in my store for like $12.99, and I sold it to them for $7. Uh, let me look real quick, because uh, I, I, I need to remember what I sold it for. Nine dollars, not seven dollars, nine dollars. Big difference. That's two dollars difference. So I sold him that for nine dollars. The next day, or, or maybe later that night, I can't remember what it was. They contacted me again with their other full story again, and they must not have realized that I was the seller of the first card. And I had another a big lot of autograph cards, 
These are all San Francisco Giants autograph cards, but they were just the players that don't really sell too well individually. Some of them were pretty nice. Some of them were like prospects that they had for, for a few years. There are some duplicates in here, uh, but a lot of great cards. There's 83 cards in this lot, 83 of them. And I had it at my store, I think for like $1.50 a card, so like $120, $130, somewhere in there. And they sent me an offer of $70, which is about, you know, about half, maybe a little, little more than half of what I was offering. I don't like to go less than a dollar a card when I'm selling these autographs. I can usually get that price pretty easy. Uh, so I countered back at $80, which is, you know, 98 cents. I don't know what, what the math is. 83 cards for $80. Now, again, they hadn't been selling. These are just hard to sell. So I'm, again, I'm happy getting 80 some dollars for this card, plus another $9 for that one. And I'll ship those all out together to them. Uh, supposedly they say they're for someone in, like I said, that's sick or in the hospital or part of their charity. Again, let me know down in the comments if you've ever had anybody contact you and try to use. I, I want to believe them. I always want to believe when people tell me their their stories and the, re, and the reason why they are trying to get a discount. Either way, I'm happy to get the money for that. All right, the last card. I have no idea why someone's buying this card, honestly. Uh, this is Zach Wilson of the New York Jets. Uh, this is his, I think it's like a second year card. And it is serial numbered on here out of, I think, just 25. It, maybe they're a Jets collector. I don't know. But Zach Wilson is probably going to be out of the league in a couple of years because he has played terribly this year. Got demoted to like third string. I'm sure he'll probably get traded to somebody in the offseason as a backup and uh, will probably disappear out of the league in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this card here, let me look down to see what it sold for. Well, the whole, I think it sold for like seven bucks because the person also bought a license plate of the New Orleans Saints. So they bought a Saints card or a Saints license plate and the Zach Wilson card comboed for $21 and like 23 cents. So uh, I'll just put these together. Actually, I ship these out in those uh, comic mailers that I have and uh, it ships out the license plates really nice. So yeah, 20 bucks for the plate and for the card. It's kind of a weird combo of the two teams. And of course, that's not the only sports items that I sold this weekend. Just listed a big batch of these bat knob decals that I've been listing for a friend of mine, consignment deal. Uh, I've talked about a whole bunch. Uh, a Dodgers one, number 21. That one sold for $10 plus a dollar shipping. I just put them in an envelope. Don't ship them out with any tracking. And we had two Oakland A's stickers and one person bought them both for $10 a piece. So we sold $30 worth of stickers yesterday. We'll split the net proceeds. I'll probably be, you know, I make like 12 or 13 as does he. It's really quick and easy to ship the to ship these, to list them, to store them, all that stuff. So I have no problem listing those. I think I listed like 20-ish of those decals yesterday. I still got like three dozen bats he brought me. Those those are more of a pain in the butt to list. Got to get to those this week, though. Uh, let's see. As with uh, those stickers, I sold one, another consignment item of his, and it's a Jacob Wilson autographed baseball. Uh, this ball is pretty beat up, but it's a uh, WAC, a WAC baseball league. I, this player played at Grand Canyon University out here. Uh, and I don't know if he played for like maybe Oakland briefly. I don't know why all of a sudden his baseball sold. I don't know if something's going on with Jacob Wilson, but I sold one last week and then I sold this one over the weekend. 20 bucks plus shipping. So I'll get that one shipped out as well and we'll split the profits on that. Uh, next baseball is Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield had a great career, but he was kind of tied up maybe in the PED guys uh, that maybe he was doing a little steroids or stuff when everybody was doing those in the 90s. Uh, but yeah, he has some really, really good years and good career stats. This baseball though is starting to yellow as far as the signature. If you get these baseballs signed in black, they'll start to yellow after a while if they're not stored properly. It is authenticated. I did get authenticated. I just got to go grab the little card that goes with it. I forgot to do that part. I sold, the, I think this one sold for 30 bucks. I think this one was $29.99. The two baseballs sold within minutes of each other. It was kind of strange, but yeah, $29.99 for Gary Sheffield. All right, a couple more sports things. Not terribly exciting. We got a hockey puck. This is the Long Beach Ice Dogs. I like finding these minor league hockey pucks, just any hockey puck in general. Uh, sometimes I'll sell them in my booth if they're in the NHL, and then these minor league ones I'll have to put on, on eBay. It's just like a giveaway item that they did at the ice rink. This one just, I think this was like one of the last items that sold over the weekend. Where is it right here? 10 bucks, $9.99 plus shipping. I find these for like a buck or two and uh, make a little money on them. They're sports related, so that's why I buy them. I don't always recommend buying stuff for two or $3 and selling it for 10, but it's stuff that I like. I don't have a problem doing it. 
All right, next up we have a shut mini helmet. Now this one did have some decals on it from like a local school or something. And I find these fairly often where they're not an NFL team. So I just take off the decals and I just sell it as a blank. So someone can use it as a custom if they want to. It does still have like the little silhouette. You can sort of see the outlines of where the sticker was. So it needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, this sold for 15 bucks. So yeah, again, I find these for a couple of dollars at the thrift stores. It's all for about 15. 15 seems to be about that right price for used mini helmets. New ones go for 25, 30, probably somewhere in that range. So you can still get 15, even if it doesn't have a team logo on it. Still got $15 for that one. All right, we're not done with the sports stuff yet. I sold two New York Mets dirt pens. I sold one of these last week. I think it was the Marlins. Uh, this is the New York Mets. Different buyers, so not one person bought them, and they are both going back to New York. So I'm sure these are going to be stocking stuffers or presents for uh, a Mets fan uh, back there. And you can see there's actual dirt in here. It doesn't say that it's dirt necessarily from the Mets. It just says game used MLB dirt. So they could have just got a bunch of dirt from the Rocky Stadium and put it in all these pens, and it's not really has anything to do with the Mets. That's just the way they did them. That's just my, my theory. And I don't think they got dirt from all the different ballparks. I think they just got it from one. Just bought a bought a truckload of baseball dirt, and then they made these pens. Uh, twelve, I think twelve ninety nine. Yeah, twelve ninety nine plus shipping on those. I think I paid three bucks a piece for them. Still got a few more to go. I'm hoping hoping some more of those sell before Christmas and, and get them out of here. All right, we do have a couple more sports things. Uh, next up, we got a box of basketball cards. Ninety ninety one Skybox basketball. It's it's amazing that this stuff still sells it. They, they produced so much of this stuff back in the 90s. We'll never see this stuff run out. This stuff will still be still be around being sold in uh, unopened boxes like this until the day that I'm gone. Uh, 1990, that was, uh, what was that, 33 years ago, almost 34 years ago. Got Michael Jordan on the front. You got MJ sold for $42, $41.99 plus shipping. I bought a few of these boxes recently. been paying 20 bucks a box for them. And uh, getting to basically double my money, you know, maybe a little bit less with all the fees and everything like that. But, you know, I'll take a, a double up on those because they sell pretty quick. All right, last sports item, but it's closed. I think I showed this in my video last week that I just picked this up and it sold. Honestly, it sold pretty much immediately after I listed it. So uh, either there was a fan out there waiting for it or I sold it way too cheap. And, and this is a brand new Puerto Rico World Baseball Classic. It's a hoodie, but it's like a sleeveless hoodie. So... Uh, got the PR for Puerto Rico logo on the back. You got the flag. You got the World Baseball Classic. Uh, never been used. You can see the uh, the pull string drawstring is still attached there. Never uh, undone. And I showed this the other day, but I'll show it to you again in case you didn't watch that video. Uh, it's got the number five written on side, and that generally means that this was a team issued item. That it was for player number five. They would have put these on all their clothes that they got for them for the uh, tournament. Uh, number five was Kike Hernandez. He's played for a few different teams, the Dodgers and Red Sox, maybe a few, a few other teams. He kind of bounced around. Fairly popular player. He was pretty good. He always beat the Diamondbacks. He always did something to beat the Diamondbacks. So I, I'm not a big fan. Uh, picked this up for $10 at a thrift store, uh, Goodwill. And it's by one of the, the spring training facilities that I'm sure that they practiced at uh, during the World Baseball Classic uh, earlier this year. Sold for $80, $79.99 plus shipping. I assume it's going to Puerto Rico. I didn't look at the address, but I'm guessing that's where it's going based on the name. So yeah, $10 into 80. Now they did have a few other pieces of Puerto Rico clothes there that I didn't buy. For for one, they didn't have the number written on them. So I think they might've been team issued shirts as well, but they just looked like shirts. They weren't anything real special like the, this hoodie and they were $10 as well. So uh, no tags attached on those. I passed them up. Maybe they would have sold for $25 for $30. I'm not positive, but either way, I got 80 bucks for this one. All right, then we got the few non-sports related items. This one here, Christmas related, because we got a nativity scene. I got them all bagged up individually. This is a, uh, what is it called? A Playmobil. Yeah, I was going to call it Fisher Price Little People, but no. It's Playmobil nativity scene. So we got all the figures right here. Got them all bagged up. Got the animals and all that. And then it has like these little paper, paper little backdrops for them. This was actually in the Christmas section at Goodwill. You know, they roll out all their holiday stuff each year. And the box that I bought actually had like three different nativity sets in it. So that was kind of cool. Got a bonus. It was priced really cheap. It was only priced like $6. I think it was priced like $5.49 or $5.99. This set alone, just these little ones went for $30, bucks, 29 dollars plus shipping. 
I'm going to have to use a little bit bigger box than I would have. It was just these figures just for these things. I don't want to get these all bent up. It's a big part of the backdrop. But yeah, I'm glad that that sold, got it out of here before Christmas, because if not, it probably would have taken all year to sell or would have sat on the shelf all year next year, hoping to sell it for the next Christmas. But yeah, either way, that's gone. It's out of here, 30 bucks, pretty good sell on that. All right, here's the last two eBay sales. Get them both over here. I sold a Doctor Who figure. This has been in my store for quite a while, probably at least six months. Uh, this is Doctor Who. It's the 10th Doctor. I was never a Doctor Who fan. I never really watched it. I probably watched a few episodes back in the 80s, and I thought it was horrible. I'm uh, I'm sorry if any of you are Doctor Who fans and, and saying, Mike, Mike, it's a great show. Maybe it is to you. Me, not so much. Uh, but yeah, I picked up this figure. Uh, it's that. That's the 10th Doctor, I guess. Uh, sold for $19.99 plus shipping, so we'll get that sent out. And the last one is this game called Formula D. It's a race car race car game. You got some Formula One and some other race cars in here. You play this game. It was 100% complete. It was in there. This is a part of a little game buy that I that I bought from a friend. Uh, sold for $20 plus shipping, I believe. I believe it was $19.99 plus shipping. And this is a heavy box. This box probably weighs four or five pounds, and it's fairly large. So uh, it's going to be expensive to ship this one out. Hopefully, it's not going too far. But like I said, I did sell one item over on Amazon. I, I only have like 20 items to set on Amazon. And probably after the start of the year, I'm going to delete probably half of those. The only things that I'll keep on there are the ones that sell well on there for better prices than they do on eBay. A lot of them I still have cross-listed now. But yeah, I'm going to pull so much inventory off of Amazon. Just the numbers aren't there for me. I'm not finding the kind of stuff that I've used to sell on Amazon. And it's getting tougher and tougher uh, to keep the items listed. Long story, I could go into a whole probably 10 minute video just about why I'm not selling on Amazon as much as I used to. I know there's still a lot of resellers that do in a big part of their businesses, but for me, it just hasn't been working out as well as, as it did many years ago. Uh, but yeah, we got this big box here. This was a turntable triple E game. It's one of the games that I talk about uh, all the time. I think last year I sold like six of these during the holiday. I had a bunch saved up for the year. It's weird. They pretty much don't sell during the year. And then once you get towards December, people buy them, I guess, for Christmas gifts because that's when I'll sell it. I still have one, two, three more up there and hopefully these will sell. It's sold for $39.99 plus shipping. Now, when you're selling on Amazon and you don't have, you don't pay for like the upgraded store, they determine how much shipping you get. I think I got like $6 and some shipping for this. So I got like $46 and change. In this big box, you know, you can't ship it for six bucks. I think this one cost me about 12. And that's one of the things you have to kind of calculate into your price when you're doing these on Amazon. So it cost me 12 to ship, their fees, you know, and all that. I'm still making pretty good money. I'm buying these games for less than $5. And they're generally usually complete. I have some extra parts. I have some of the extra poker chips and all that in case that they're missing a few. Either way, I'm rambling on a lot about this Amazon sale. Next, I want to talk about this big old box, box, big old box of Lego. Finally got this thing sorted out. I bought this thing probably a couple of months ago and just been kind of ignoring it. My wife had it in the dining room areas where I had put it out there to try to sort through them. Yesterday while I, while I was watching football, I decided I'd sort through these and make some bulk bags for my booth. So yeah, this was all filled, not loose Lego. They were already in some bags sort of separated by color. So that was kind of nice. And uh, I just went through and made some two pound bags. And that's kind of what I do at my booth. Just take these big Ziploc bags, weigh them, make two pounds. You know, they're like two, just over two pounds. Two pounds, one ounce, two ounces, something like that. And I sell them for 10 bucks. Uh, and they've sold pretty well in my booth. I know some of you are going to say, Mike, you can get a little more than that on eBay if you separate them by color and all that. Sometimes. You look out on eBay. There are hundreds, if not thousands of listings for like two pounds and one pound and 10 pounds and 20 pounds of Lego out there. So you're fighting a lot of competition and you probably have to promote your listing to get some of those sales. I'd rather get $5 a pound, just throw them in a bag like this and put it in my booth and uh, they'll sell. Last time I did it, I took six bags down there and they all sold in that first month they were down there. I think the first week, one person bought like four or five. So I got, uh, let's see what we got here. We got six... We got seven, eight bags out of here. So at 10 bucks a piece, $80. Quick math on that one. I paid $20 for the whole box. So it's not like it's huge profit. I mean, 20 into 80 is nice. I do have one other. This had, they had some base plates in there. So I'm going to bundle those up together. I'm going to put $10 on that. That's actually a pretty good price on these as well. A couple of them had a little bit of wear. 
These bigger ones, uh, I probably could put those in a separate lot on eBay and maybe get ten to fifteen dollars just for those. But I'm going to give someone at, at my at my booth a deal. Sometimes that's how you get people to keep coming back to your booth. They come and check the deals. Sometimes it's other other vendors and other resellers that come and buy stuff too. I don't have a problem. I'm going to get ninety dollars for this box of Lego. I paid twenty. Yes, it took me several hours to do it because I was kind of doing it slowly while I was watching football yesterday. Actually, the Cardinals won yesterday. Unbelievable. On the road at Pittsburgh. They beat Pittsburgh. I don't know how that happened, but uh, good job, Cardinals. Last thing I'm going to show you today is this. This is actually is an item for sale. This is actually part of my collection. I don't show a whole lot of my collection stuff on this channel, but I'm going to go ahead and show, you to you, show it to you today. It's in the sports card album, even though it's not sports cards. I've been working on this set for several years, and I still have some to go. This is the original Topps Star Wars set. Now, this isn't the first series. The first series is fairly expensive. That's the blue cards. I don't have that one yet. Actually, I probably have a small handful, five or ten of the singles for that set. And I've been working on this set. So we got the whole red series. This is series two. Bought this complete set. I'm not going to flip through every page, but I just want to show you that these have so much nostalgia to me. I remember buying these cards as a kid, getting some of these. Obviously, I'm old enough to where I went to the original Star Wars movies at the theater. And that first Star Wars, A New Hope, Episode 4. Uh, was just so groundbreaking and as a kid seeing that movie seeing the opening scene with the star destroyer coming in it, you can't even describe how that felt seeing that in the theater it was so high tech and, and blew me away so star wars does does have some great memories for me so i decided i wanted to go ahead and put this set together the next series is the yellow series got it right here uh let's see what's next after yellow now yellow uh was followed by the green series and the green series has a notorious card and i'm going to show you the clean version of the card i'm pretty sure it's in here i just got to find where it is i don't know the card number i don't have my glasses on lighting in here isn't and there's a lot of reflection on here so i'm trying to see where it is if i can find it all right if you don't know already it's this c3po card this is the clean version there was a card that made it look we'll just say inappropriate they called it the golden rod card yeah so they actually corrected the card cropped out part of the picture and this is the PG version of the card. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to look it up. And I don't want it to pop up on the screen just in case any kids happen to be watching this video. Uh, so yeah, even the corrected version has a little little bit of value. Uh, so yeah, that card's kind of kind of funny that uh, that even happened. Uh, the next series is the orange series. I'll show a few pictures of some of these cards. I'll pick a few of my favorite favorites, and I've probably thrown a few pictures along the way uh, as I've done it. Uh, Orange, I believe, was the last series. I don't have the full set yet. I still have some missing cards in there, probably five or six. Uh, and then also in here, I decided to do another set in here just because I bought the whole set at a local auction. And I put it in here, and that is Battlestar Galactica. Again, as a kid, Battlestar Galactica, I love this TV show. I tried re-watching it a while back, and it's, it's actually pretty horrible if you watch it now. But as a kid in like 1977, 1978, what year, whatever year this show came out, Oh man, I loved it. So yeah, Battlestar Galactica cards got the whole set. There's like 132 or 160 cards in that set. So that's part of my own personal collection. Again, I don't collect a whole lot, but every once in a while, it's nice to kind of flip through and look at these cards and uh, kind of go for that nostalgia of Star Wars and uh, Battlestar. All right, that's it for today. I'll try to get another video out again this week as well. I'm going to go out and do a fair amount of thrifting this week. Pretty going to be a pretty normal week for me. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you have anything you want to tell me down in the comments, I don't know. Someone leave me a comment down below. Say hi. You know, but yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.